It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therada and Mary Joe Foley are here. They both have been using, actually only Paul, but Paul's been using Windows 10 for the last week. We'll find out how he likes it, and we'll find out where Mary Joe has not been using Windows 10 for the last week. Windows Weekly is coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 383, recorded October 8th, 2014. I did it my sway. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price. Because Everyone deserves a good night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash windows and enter the promo code windows. And by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with healthy delicious treats like baked cheddar potato sticks. To get your free NatureBox sampler box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit and by carbonite whether you have one computer at home or several at your small business carbonite backs up your files to the cloud automatically and continually plus access your files anytime anywhere with a free app start your free trial at carbonite.com no credit card required use the offer code windows and you get two free bonus months with purchase it's time for window <laughs> windows weekly the renovation. And who are you edition. again, sir? I would be Leo Laporte. I'm back. Yeah. You thought you were rid of me, didn't you? A lovely Windows Weekly in our own studio. And I've managed almost every time Paul and Mary Jo have been in studio to get out of town. Did right. They? I don't know. It's weird. So, like I said last uh, two weeks ago, I'm not positive you actually work there. Uh, <laughs> have you ever seen I, the I brick do, house? I do Leo know that you exist. Time? I did see photos from <laughs> London. So you're you're there. You're somebody. Oh, you bought my cover story. Hey. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, but this was a, a very exciting because uh, the the briefing for Windows. T oh, and we should mention. Hi, Mary Jo. <laughs> Mary, Hi. Mary jo Hi from the construction zone, guys. Has, no, come on. We know the truth. You've got a guy in a bag somewhere in, in your <laughs> trunk, and he's trying to get out. And Let me out. It it sounds like, like she it. has. A, it's like a poltergeist okay. kind of thing. Oh man. <laughs> They're so close to me. They're renovating this apartment to the side of me here. Oh, and um, my, this wall is vibrating right now. I can you should bang on the wall a few times. Hammer. I'm going to if it gets too bad. So. <laughs> this is what they call the demo portion of the renovation. Exactly. Somebody with a sledgehammer is taking out yep. the old. They are. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Well, we'll just, we'll, it's fine. That's life. This isn't. You know, broadcast television. This is not the, the Colbert <laughs> Report. We're, we're it's just a podcast. Paul, Paul said to me earlier, "Just bring a pie over and beg them to just be quiet for a yeah. couple hours." <laughs> uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta bribe people like this. They're they're a union. They yeah, right. <laughs> so um, I, yeah, I you know what are you gonna do? It's fine. I don't mind. Yep. Um, we'll, we'll I'm just looking uh, at your notes, but I, I have a as a personal favor. Mm -hmm. I know you already did this on the show, but I'm just curious. You flew out. I mean, I saw Paul's very yeah, depressing Actually, Leo, let's just go back and look at our notes from last week, and that will help us <laughs> remember what we any. did. There aren't any. I saw you last week. There aren't very depressing it pictures of hotel anyone. rooms. And oh. <laughs> no. oh. we, we were filing our stories from the back of the car that you guys sent to pick oh, us wow. up right oh, after wow. the event. Yeah, that's and true, so actually. We were like sitting there filing, and then we were like, "Wow, we don't have any show notes." And Paul's like, "We're just gonna wing it." <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's really fine. So you went, yep. you came out. Was how long was the briefing? One hour, forty-five minutes. Yeah, yeah. So they said an hour, and they and and they it wasn't longer. Yeah, but there were other uh, misstatements. Uh, I would say. I mean, they said there would be no Q and A, and there was a Q and A. That's good. They said there would no be no sidebar meetings, and there were sidebar meetings. Um, you guys get a sidebar meeting? Yeah, we got a quickie, um, so to speak, uh, <laughs> because we had to get going for the. I was, I'm still over tired from last week. The point is, it was very hectic, and because last week was Oracle World or whatever that trade show was called, um, every hotel in the city was booked. 
And so Microsoft was nice enough to tell us about this event at the last minute and then send us to a city where there no, were no hotels. And so I got to stay in a delightful little bed and breakfast um, kind of place that I believe was staffed by homeless people and was in, so scary. Um, I, I actually took everything with me when I left the hotel room, which I've never done before. <laughs> Yeah. What do you mean took it? Oh, you mean like you didn't leave a laptop in the hotel room? I didn't leave anything in there. What was the name of it? The Chelsea? The, what was the... No, no. <laughs> no, it was called... I'd have to... Re I don't remember. It was awful. You it was posted up in the a title. picture. I think maybe it was on Facebook. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm surprised my phone didn't get stolen while I was taking that photo. Uh, to give you an idea of how bad it was there, um, at 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, the, the, the day of the event, I, I woke up, went outside to go get breakfast. I asked the guy at the front desk, um, who I think was English as a third language, what, where I could eat breakfast, and he had no idea. And so I figured I'd walk out and maybe, you know, Bing Maps, like Starbucks or something. And, what and this part, is where I walk out to. What part of town was, were you in? The Tenderloin. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so I this always is go, like whenever scene. I'm in the Tenderloin, I always go to Lambeau's Nightcap. <laughs> yeah. That's well, the you, place. That's the place people are leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning. Yes. But... I, you know, it was like that scene in Shaun of the Dead where he's wandering around the town and the zombie attack has already occurred, but he doesn't realize it and zombies are all around him. And I, I walked out. Um, and here, by the way, is where he had breakfast <laughs> at the fabulous Olympic Flame By the way, this Cafe. place was actually fantastic. This no, place was I fan. love the Olympic Flame. Yeah. Um, and this was the real deal. I really liked that place. The but, only thing wrong the way, is you have was, a ceramic mug instead of one of those Greek co paper coffee oh, yeah. cups. <laughs> so I couldn't, you know what? I was delighted you were to happy. find this place. Yeah. Um, seriously. Me and 25 homeless people, all of, all of whom were engaged in various activities. Um, there was a woman spinning in the crosswalk in the middle of it with her gray hoodie in a circle, and then yeah. she got dizzy and dropped it. Yeah. And then she bent over to pick it up yeah. and almost fell on her face. Yeah. I had three people talk to me on the, uh, before I found that restaurant you just showed, uh, two of the whom I have no idea what they were saying because it kind of came out as, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm going to get stabbed out here. Like, this is not At the beautiful hotel lane. In downtown yeah, by the San way, Francisco. <laughs> if you look, if you look up the reviews of this hotel, um, uh, there were words I've never seen in hotel <laughs> reviews before, uh, like, like bed bugs. <laughs> oh no! Um, you know, so yeah, it was not good. Oh, I'm sorry you had to do that, and Mary Jo. Where'd you? You had friends, obviously. You didn't. No, I I stayed at a hotel um, at the other end of Market Street, right across from that travel lodge that is known uh, for drug dealers yeah. and homeless. Yeah. Yeah, I was across the street from that. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was kind of scary. Um but the hotel was very clean and nice, but uh, it was so scary walking down market and you know, I live in New York, right? And I walk around here yeah. by myself at late like early late, you know, and I have never been as scared as I was walking back to my hotel at 8 p.m. on Market Street. <laughs> I see. I'm mad that I wasn't here. I could have been your welcome wagon. I could have steered you <laughs> and I could have made sure you were safe, got the mayor to come down, Ed Lee, and yeah. take care of you. But uh, I feel bad. You know, I, you know I, scarred this, for life is probably yeah. a strong term, but I, I think <laughs> I feel I bad. love San Francisco. It's a beautiful city. A wonderful I get city. it. Yeah. But my God, is it being ruined by this kind of thing? I don't understand. Tenderloin's always been that way. Yeah. But it's all over San Francisco. You know? There's a lot of It really homeless. is getting worse. Yeah. It's just where you it's, were. By the way, the, nice the presence, parts. it's not the presence of homeless people, right? I mean, I, I accept and understand that they exist. It's the sheer aggressiveness of them. Yeah. You know, you're almost like physically attacked every time you go to the city. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's just, no. it's too bad. I, I think it, I think it would have been a nice event to have in Seattle. Let's just say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although downtown Seattle's no prize either at night. I'll tell you, it's I pretty feel, scary I down here. Terrible. Place. I, I mean, really, I mean, I have a deep affinity for San Francisco. It is our sure. at our hometown. Oh no, I do too. And, yeah, yeah, I feel bad that uh, you had such a bad experience. I don't. Think oh, I've had that, so many fantastic experiences in yep. San Francisco, but unfortunately, and in sharp contrast to places like. New York or London, frankly, or Barcelona, any other big city. I've been to Washington, D.C., where there are a lot of homeless people. Um, 
I've never felt so threatened as I wow, have I'm in so San Francisco and on repeated uh, trips. And this was yeah. the worst one. And, well, actually, no, it wasn't. It was one of the worst ones. But next time, you, you know. got to go to the Google Enclave. You know, they've taken over about a third of the city just for Google employees. And that's yeah. right. got a wall and a barbed wire fence. <laughs> it's like for cheese. <laughs> right. It's like a post apocalyptic movie. It's Only a, thing it's anybody a ever asks you for is some internet access. It's never, uh, and they're never. <laughs> sure. yeah. Hey, buddy, can you spare some internet access? <laughs> I feel, I'm I just, so sorry you had that experience. No. I blame Oracle Open World. Yeah, yeah. And Paul, I, uh, Paul was blaming I blame Microsoft. How about well, not next, scheduling it during that? You know, this week, I think it's Salesforce. I mean, there's, there's a, you know, yeah. Dream, the Dreamforce conference. There's always big, it's yep. it's not unusual, even in what would be technically the off season, uh, that you, you can't <laughs> get a hotel. Yeah. Sure. I'm sorry. I really am. I've never what, had that experience with a hotel either. I mean, like not being able to find one, you know? No. And by the way. Uh, the Aria, which I had stayed in two weeks previous in Las Vegas, uh, which on that Friday night was the most expensive hotel in the entire city, right? Mm -hmm. Cost less than the place I stayed what? in in San Francisco. What? Yes. Yep. Well, I don't understand that at all. Oh, was, well, you know, they jack up the prices because yeah, they, they can't. Know. There's, there's nowhere else to stay. I'm sorry. Anyway, how was the briefing? Joe, was Joe Belfiore, <laughs> I know he's on video. Was he there in person too? They put the brief in briefing, Leo. Yes. It was. He was there. <laughs> it was short. short, quick. Yep, <laughs> it was brief. <laughs> Did you learn anything you didn't already know? Yeah, a couple of things. A couple small things. Like. Yeah. I don't. Um, we got no. to see the first <laughs> official time that they were demoing Windows 10, right? Uh, oh, well, yeah, bits, bits are out. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I, mean, I don't remember, but I don't think we knew whether they would give out copies of the well, software. They did. Uh, they, we knew it would be in October, and so the joke is it was October 1st, which was yeah. the next day. And by the oh, way, day after. Yeah. since I have an infinite capacity co to complain, let me also complain <laughs> about the fact that we knew they weren't going to be giving out the, the this build at the event, but they provided it starting at midnight the next day, which was 12 hours later. And it was from 10 days previous, they could have given us the build. Like, seriously. A USB what? key, simple. Yeah, uh, something, yeah. anything. A little, a little, a, little uh, a gift chain. for your trouble kind of thing would have been nice. Um, and by the way, the other thing is, you know, think about this. Most people who go to this event, or maybe not most, but many people would have to fly home the next day which is the day they make the build available, yeah. which means it's going to be next to impossible for any of those people to get that build yeah. that day. And so if you actually went to the event, it would be more difficult to get the build on the first day, not less difficult, which is kind of the opposite the way it should be. I could go on and on, Leo. I'm sorry. Let's just hope this <laughs> just, was a learning experience yeah. for everyone. <laughs> That's all I could say. <laughs> it's possible that there are other answers to the command jump, you know, beyond how far or how high, <laughs> you know, that maybe the, uh, another answer would be, yeah, I don't think I'm going to jump this time. How many people were there? There are about 50 total attendees. Wow. So that's small. a small group. Yeah. That's it was very the small. elite, yeah. the creme de la creme of yeah, tech yeah, it was reporters. More than that. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Well, was David Pogue there? Yeah. Uh, no, but that's not the point. So, well, Ed no, Baig? I don't know. Uh, no, there were, I think there were Walt people from each of those. Mossberg? <laughs> no, but he. This wasn't okay. an Apple event. Oh, right. oh, you're right. What am I thinking? <laughs> you know how we're not at the Apple events? They're not at our events. Yeah. This was a Ed Bot type of people. Yeah. 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 Ed was there and Tom and. Tom um, Warren of The Verge. Yeah. The Windows um, folks. Uh, yeah. The Windows coverers. The people who cover Windows. You. They were, we were all there. throughout. Mary yeah. Jo Foley. Is yeah. that a tight fraternity? Do you I all know each other and. You know, I know, I know Paul doesn't like oh, anybody, yeah, yeah. but you get no, along. That's not true. No, 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 that's not true. In fact, um, I, I look forward to these events. I would the, think, it's like yeah. a family, it's a family reunion, you know? Yeah, it is. And I should call out a few of them because, you know, you know, Peter Bright comes. We Dr. love hanging Pizza. out with Peter. Yeah, love that. Tom, uh, Tom Warren as well. And uh, Alex Wilhelm, I joke, I joke with him. He was going to get coffee in the morning while we were in line. And I joked with him about getting me a coffee and he did, which was actually really nice and then i tried to pay for it and he wouldn't let me i mean oh, it's nice there is that kind of element of um camaraderie to it i enjoy that uh, aspect of it quite a bit and then mary joe yep. was there <laughs> so, yeah and i, I saved nice. oh, mary joe and had go. a seat down front hello foley yeah. <laughs> we were in the front row that was pretty nice i was i was making faces row. wow 
So uh, Belfiore, uh, who else presented? Terry Myers. Uh, Terry Myers, Terry Myers, who runs Operating System Group. Did, how was what was their demeanor like? Were, see, I I want to ask the emotional questions. Were they did they feel good about what they were up to? Yeah, actually, yeah, I, I think, think Mary Jo would agree, right? That it got off to kind of a weird start. I mean. Uh, it was almost like they were trying to adopt a uh, kind of wistful, you know, <laughs> humble kind of, you know, we, we understand, uh, you know, the importance of Windows to 1.5 billion people. And it, got, it was kind of weird at the beginning. It was like he kind of sat down on a stool and, you know, <laughs> gather together, children. I have a story to tell you. <laughs> it was a little weird, but it got, I, I, yeah, it was good overall. Yeah. But I think they were proud of what they had to show um, and that. They thought, you know what, we, we're fixing Windows and we're going to make it a better experience, for, especially for the business customer, which was the target of this first preview. So that was good. I think people who have seen it since have said, hey, it's, it's pretty far along for being a very early preview. And you can actually use it on a desktop or on a laptop. It works. Which, you know, kind of makes sense, right? It's not like yeah. this is a brand new yeah. thing, although they keep talking like it is. Um, it's, you know, the next version of Windows. So you, you start with this kind of stable base and you throw a couple of stuff onto it, uh, a couple of things onto it. Um, I mean, in my experience so far, for day-to-day -day use, it's been fine. Sur surprisingly stable, really. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the I mean, event it's, was... It's nine months but, before it's out, right? Right, right. There's still time, right? I mean, they have a lot of time. We It wasn't a consumer preview. They were just saying, hey, you know what? We told you there was going to be a start menu. Here's the start menu. We told you there were going to be win Metro style windows on the desktop. Here you go. There they are. Is it, you know, so I mean, the fact that it works so well now tells me it's just really Windows 8.1 with some UI changes at this point. Oh, Leo, we're going to get to that. <laughs> yeah, oh, we are going to get oh, to that. Oh, promises, promises. <laughs> Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, let, I, yeah. we could address it now, I, right? I mean, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mary Jo. Yeah. No, I was going to say, again, we don't know what's going to be, what all the features are going to be of this. They had very certain things that they wanted to make sure that we saw to and make us mostly feel UI like... UI yeah, features, right? Mostly UI. And that's, you know, Joe Belfiore's job is more focused on the UI, and he was presenting the UI. They weren't there to talk about, like, hey, what's new in Hyper-V, or hey, here's what's new in security, although we did find out about although, some frankly, of that too, but... Although, frankly, that would have been an appropriate a bit of conversation for the enterprise oriented thing that it was supposedly yeah uh they were doing there actually I mean, the new security model sounds good i mean it's it's exactly what they should be doing right <laughs> oh wow that was a dead, that was a pregnant pause I, no i mean i, I go no? ahead I mean, yes i was gonna say i'm not yes. sure what i would call the new security model in it at this point if unless you mean like uh, azure active directory being able to people being able to t authenticate to that and not necessarily just their Microsoft account. That's that was one security thing. I, I thought there were like there was encryption, uh, global encryption and stuff like that. Am I wrong? I don't think that's new to ten. Um, I, I think the way to think of it is they they. I mean, I'm reading Mary it, Jo's article here. <laughs> Did I talk about global encryption? <laughs> uh, more than under the cover security, it says. Yeah, um, I talked a little bit about VPN and Azure Active Directory. Um, uh, we talked about some of the things going on with Windows Store. Oh, and that is, that they didn't talk. This about. is what I interpreted as uh, encryption. Threshold builds data protection into the natural flow, and in integrates data protection at the platform level. I interpreted that as a, some sort of global security model. Maybe I maybe I overstepped on that. So it's actually kind of hard to know what he means by that right. specifically. Right. That Microsoft has a variety of security features that they're kind of adding across platforms and are managing through MDM uh, solutions like Intune. And so, for example, that almost sounds like their file encryption capabilities where a file has an understanding of who was authorized to open it or edit it and that if you mistakenly or purposely give it to someone who doesn't... Uh, fall into that category, they can't view it. Um, is that a feature of Windows? Is that a feature of the file platform? Is that a feature of the mobile device management software you're using? It's kind of hard to yeah. say. I mean, I, it's the lines are kind of blurring here. Um, because what, one of the things we don't see in this first preview is the mobile aspect of it, the, the touch interfaces, the 
phone slash tablet hybrid stuff that possibly doesn't have a desktop. You know, there's, there's more coming. And I think to fully understand what he's saying that we need to see more. I think is yeah, I'm looking. So, so those tidbits, Leo, came from a blog post that someone from Microsoft wrote and then they made him pull. And yanked, right, right. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking at the original one because I saved it. And uh, he doesn't really get into that. He talks more, when he's talking about security, he's talking more about Azure Active Directory, single sign-on, MDM, like Paul was describing, mobile well, device I was going to say, every one of those things you just said falls in, that's all enterprise management suite functionality. So yeah. it's hard to yeah. place that he on Windows. He doesn't really talk the about... Um, encryption or the security model in the in the post that was pulled. Yeah. So the, I guess the way I would think of it, though, is, as far as security model in Windows 10 is, it's obviously based on what came before. Um, for the mobile uh, modern app platform, they have sandboxing. One of the uh, frank, frankly baloney excuses they gave for why that thing had those things had to run full screen was that they wanted to prevent screen scraping and. Uh, other forms of like app injection or whatever that would supposedly occur if you ran those apps on the desktop. And of course, in Windows 10, it's like, hey, we're running them on the desktop. You know, I, I, I don't <laughs> see any reason why sandboxing can't work on the desktop. Yeah. We already run, I mean, uh, runtimes don't have to have run in their own uh, user experience. You know, you run Adobe Air apps, you run Java apps, you run .NET apps, WPF mm -hmm. apps, web apps, whatever on the desktop. I mean, I think... What they're doing in Windows 10 with regards to those modern apps makes sense and can be done without usurping the security model that was already in place. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm looking at it. He has a list of features, too. Why and did that blog secure? post get pulled? Because uh, he was talking about stuff they didn't want out yet. Yeah. <laughs> Probably because they didn't so want to make a promise or set an expectation, well, right? Or it's also an individual who's very excited about what they're yeah. doing in Windows 10 and in other products, right? And right. Uh, knowing a, enough about the other things that are going on with Microsoft right now, it's very clear that he commingled things that were not Windows 10 specific. Uh, in fact, even his lists of uh, new features they introduced in various versions of Windows includes things that weren't, in fact, features of those versions of Windows. They were features yeah. of... Uh, the Microsoft desktop optimization pack or, you know, things that are sort of tertiary to Windows or on the side of Windows. Um, so I, he's looking at it from sort of a holistic Microsoft stack viewpoint, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Plus, they want to trickle this information out and keep the news cycle going, right? So they just wanted to talk mostly about the UI at last week's event. But he was like, hey, here's everything we get going. <laughs> he was, he was, yeah. He's excited. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I admire right. that. No, no, it was, right. It was done for the right reasons. Yeah. It was not, yeah. uh, screw my employer. I'm gonna no, 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 no. No, it wasn't. Back. He said, look at yeah. what it we're wasn't. doing. Um, yeah. And I agree that they need, I mean, when you start talking about the features nine months before release, you really do have to kind yeah. of stretch out the... The, yeah, the, the releases, do. yeah. They do. They yeah. could learn yeah, from Edward other... Snowden and Glenn Greenwald. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. He he also talked about um, the new Windows Store model that's going to be part of this. And, you know, they did say at the event, hey, we're going to actually be able to pull off this one store thing. So there's going to be one store for phone, Xbox, and Windows. And it's actually going to show up with Windows 10. But he went oh. deeper and he's like, you know what? We're going to have desktop apps in that store and not just Metro style apps. So he he was like sharing a lot of stuff that they have not gone public with yet at all. He Which, just was excited. <laughs> you know, I, I, there are a lot of um, feature requests for Windows 10. And there are a lot of things that he mentions that are things we've all been talking about for the last two years. You know, when you look at something like the Windows Store, and especially when you look at something like Windows RT, in which you cannot download desktop applications from the web or from sort you know anything any desktop applications, you know the first thought that comes to mind is well, surely there could be a testing process for desktop applications where you could ensure that they perform within some range for battery life and system performance and so forth and are safe, and you could certify them and put them in the store. Stepping even beyond that, I would say who cares if they meet these requirements? Allow them in there anyway and have there be a warning. Like, we're going to let you download Chrome for Windows RT, but you need to know it's going to yeah. impact your battery life and the performance of the system. And I think a lot of people would say, I don't care. Thank you. Let me just have it. Um, and so it seems like they're going to be doing that. They've not announced it <laughs> um, uh, publicly, but this uh, blog post that she's talking about, he says they're doing it. And, and to me, it's like, of course they're doing it. They have to do this. Yeah. 
What else have we? Uh, well, I mean, you've been playing with it now, right? You've you've installed it, and yeah, we don't really. I have it. not. I have not. Installed no, no, it. you're a wise person. <laughs> Paul, are you using it right now really. for this Skype? Call? I'm using it everywhere, Leo. It's <laughs> actually, you'd be, I'm surprised how many people uh, have installed it and are using it and say, "Oh, it's fast. It's reliable." There are a list of firsts we could probably go through for this release, but one of the firsts, and I think it's a big one, is, and you alluded to it earlier, first preview, totally usable. Yeah, uh, that's You amazing. know, this is not something they used to do before. Uh, they would break everything before. There, there are a couple of little weird things in here. I mean, you can't activate the charms using a mouse anymore, but the charms are still there. If you know the keyboard combination, you can get to them that way. There's little things like that, but honestly... Um, I, you know, I find this very usable. I, I will also say this. Be, before there was a Windows 8, before there was a start screen, my primary interface to the computer in Windows 7 was just the desktop with the taskbar because that was one of the nice things they added in that release. The, 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 a lot of the advances in the start menu over the years became superfluous to me in Windows 7 because I no longer went there for my most recently used apps. I no longer pinned apps to the start. Wow. Screen. I, the start the start menu became this thing I only used infrequently anyway. Yeah. And so, honestly, from my perspective as a desktop user, as someone who's been very comfortable using Windows 8, and of course, that's gotten much easier and better over the course of 8.1 and the 8.1 updates, you know, moving forward to this Windows 10 preview, it's like, yeah, great. <laughs> you know, it works exactly the way I've been working all along. It's fine. And, I, and this uh, speaks to something that I wrote um, some number of days after the release when I finally sort of kind of try to conceptualize what it is they had accomplished with this release. We have to, not so much guess, but we can't experience it exactly, but we know the basic plans on the touch side. And we also know that the touch stuff was fairly mature as a platform anyway. That they've kind of done the impossible here. They've taken this thing that everybody hated. And, and by everybody, I don't mean pedantically, literally everybody, but obviously a, a huge range of people hated Windows 8. And they've made it into Windows 10, which is a this great upgrade for both Windows 8 and for Windows 7. That as a Windows 7 user, you can come to this and yeah, there you go. Start menu, evolved, desktop, perfect. Windows 8, touch device, yep, beautiful. Evolved touch device, perfect. How did they do this? You, I sort of, uh, you know, I compared it to like alchemy. It's like making uh, gold out of lead. How was this possible? You say in your <laughs> no, article. Seriously, that's a, big, that's a big deal. Houston, we have no problem. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Well, I mean, you know, in the, back in the I mean, look, you've heard me use the phrase making lemonade many times over the years. Uh, you're presented with a terrible, terrible thing. All right, let's make the best of this. The best we can do is make lemonade out of this. This is not making lemonade. This is, they had this whole thing that, again, most people hated. Like, not, not just didn't sort of like it. Like, most people actually hated it. And they've turned it into a turkey dinner. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, seriously, that's an impressive feat all by itself. Yeah, I don't get to I don't have to get to compliment Microsoft a lot. You need to take this one in for a second. It's this is a big deal. People are gonna you you feel that people are gonna look at well we you know how people are but people ought oh, to look at this they, and say wow they they listened they responded yep. and they did it right. Yep. Paul, I, the, the feedback think, though, I get. Yeah. I was gonna say, do you think this is like? I mean, to me, it seems even though I'm not running the bits, it seems like what Windows Seven was to Vista, this is to Windows Eight. Right? Yes, it's a fix. But you know what? But it's so much more impressive because with Windows yeah. Vista, it was obvious what they had to do to fix it. I think a lot of people with Windows 8 said, man, I don't see how they're going to fix this. I don't see yeah. how they can make one thing that's going to please these guys over here that love the desktop. These guys over here that, frankly, you know, there's only a couple hundred million of them, but still a lot of people, <laughs> actually really like Windows 8 on the tablet. Oh, and by the way, we got these Windows Phone guys over here. And you know what? They like Windows Phone, but they didn't like what they did to Windows Metro and you know regular Windows. How do you make this thing that pleases all of these guys? Again, it's not 100% complete. We've got a ways to go. But I look at what they've done here, and I, I just didn't think it would be possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm impressed. Well, and Mary Jo, I guess the question for you is, will the enterprise be as happy as Paul is? Yeah, <laughs> I think they will be. If you guys remember, when we first saw Windows 8 and I was representing the enterprise point of view, I said, wow, they are going to hate this. Yeah, remember? You know, I, yes. I was like, 
whoa, retraining there. It's going to be scary. People are going to avoid this. And when I see this, I'm like, you know what? This is what they want to see. Good. Hey, a start menu. Hey, a taskbar. And I can have windows and I can do things that I already know how to do. And I don't have to retrain to take advantage of all I, the new <laughs> stuff. I don't remember if you were there, but um, for the original Windows 8 developer preview, they had a, a kind of half day reviewers workshop. And <laughs> and in sharp contrast to every other Microsoft Windows event I've ever been at, the the window the the business portion of that was like this throwaway fifteen minute thing at the end. And I remember sitting in the audience, and the, and it was actually Ian McDonald. I felt kind of bad for him because there wasn't really much to say. And he talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. And the idea was like, this is what's new for business users in Windows Eight. And then he was done. And I leaned into whoever I was next to, Raphael probably, and said. So what's new for business here exactly? <laughs> I mean, but no one could, I was like, yeah. what did he just say? What, was there anything in there? I, you know. Yeah. Now they told us when, when we were talking to them after the event, they have been showing this to business customers since February, I think they said. Yeah. And like under NDA. So they, they went to them and said, what do you think if we do this? Mm -hmm. How about this? Mm -hmm. So they actually went out and showed it at a very, very early stage and did what they asked them to do. And, you know, everyone's like, yeah, but that's what beta testing is or that's what early testing <laughs> is. But sure. that isn't what happened with Windows 8, right? Because no, it, it wouldn't have come out the way it came out if they had done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. The chat room's saying, we don't know this happy Paul. <laughs> yeah. Where's yeah. the cranky Paul we we know? Listen, uh, and this came in the wake of my horrific San yeah. Francisco experience. You were prepared so, to be cranky. Oh, yeah. No, this thing, if there was anything wrong with it, I would have went to town on it. I was in the mood. But it was just, you know, honestly, it's great. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well done. Yep. Terry and, you know, and Joe. That, there's all this new feedback stuff that's part of Windows 10 um, that, if you sign up for the preview, you get into the insiders thing, you get private news groups, you can suggest features that you can actually interact with them about specific features that you're testing. That also is new, right? That, that's something that didn't it's, happen with Windows 8 either. It's so unbelievable. I feel like I'm going to be shocked, like <laughs> physically shocked. You, know, like, you almost don't trust it, right? <laughs> like this can't, they, can, they aren't seriously asking what we think mm -hmm. about this, are we? Well, I mean, another thing that's new, a keystroke logger. No. Well, no. <laughs> no. No. Well, no. I, you know, and I, I respond, if that's the case, I, I responded uh, on Twitter to somebody, well, yeah, this is, you don't have to use this. This is a technical preview. Sure. They yeah. want it, they're instrumenting it as. If you look at the uh, that's what happens. service, though, it, yeah. it's, um, yeah. it's really just based around the notion of you're providing feedback right. and we want to yeah. see what you're talking about. making oh. you use it. I doubt, I would be it's, shocked if it were in the release version. This is yeah. what you. This is what happens when you do a technical preview. You right. you get watched. Yeah, they're looking watch, at what yeah, keystrokes yeah. you yes. make. They are looking at that, but you're letting them look at it. That's it's not the like deal. they have a keylogger on you. It's the deal. <laughs> it's just right. bad. people are so quick to just. I know. Well, it's still it's still Microsoft, right? So you you still have to operate within this bubble where they're not going to get anything right. So we have to find something, you know, that we can complain about. Uh, yeah. I, I, I love you know. I, uh, you, you get to, you can tell things are going well. I got I should look this up actually. So you can tell things are, are looking uh, are looking good because um, I've seen that, that you can see what people are providing feedback about. You can see what the most popular items of feedback are. You know, and and you get into these really specific issues like people are saying, well, don't you think the power button in the start menu should be a little lower in the menu? And it's like <laughs> three pixels you know lower. We, we, yeah. we, I'm sorry, we win if this is the <laughs> right. You yeah. know, right. I mean seriously, yeah. like. The number two request, 453 votes. Uh, could you add a little animation to the start menu when it opens? You know, <laughs> guys, I got a newsflash for you. Yeah, this That's this is amazing. win. We've won. Yeah. You know, like yeah. if this is the type of stuff that people are worried about, yeah, there's nothing seriously wrong. Good news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's pause. Come back. More to come. Paul Thorat. I didn't introduce you at the beginning. I was so excited to find out about Windows 10, the uh, editor-in-chief of the Supersite for Windows, winsupersite.com, author of many, many books, including uh, the late latest, the Windows 8.1 Field Guide. It's all at windows81book.com, and many of them are just free for the download. Mary Jo Foley writes about Microsoft at uh, ZDNet, allaboutmicrosoft.com. Both of them have been sleeping well. Actually, Paul has not been sleeping well, but will be sleeping well. <laughs> on their new Casper 
mattress. I'm I'm I I'm thrilled that you both because we we talked to all the hosts and said you know we've got this new advertiser would right. you be interested in getting one of these mattresses and I have one in fact um, I did a video of uh, of me uh, opening up the box and letting it go the mattress comes to you by mail in a box I got a queen size that fits in a box that you couldn't even put by the, small children by, <laughs> by the way um, we, we know our UPS guy personally and um, thus we get treated like crap but. <laughs> He, he arrived one day and he he walked up to the house without the box and he just looked at me and he said, seriously? <laughs> You're getting mattresses in the mail now? Seriously. Mattresses in the mail? Casper yeah. is a startup and you wouldn't think that this would be a startup, but they, they said, look, we want to make great mattresses, premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost. They're actually revolutionizing. It's so, you can see I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's, if you're watching the video, that it really is comfortable. Uh, they're cutting the cost of dealing with resellers. There's no showroom, and they're passing the savings directly on the consumer. You may say, well, wait a minute. I want to lie on my mattress before I buy it. But you know what? Let me tell you from real experience. I've I, I've done that. Got to the mattress showroom. You can't in 30, min in 30 seconds or a minute. Even Ozzy loves our Casper mattress. 30 seconds or a minute. Find out if that mattress is right for you. So what Casper does is, is they'll send it to you, and you have 100 days. Free delivery. Painless returns. They actually send somebody to come collect it and pack the box off up within a 100-day period. So you don't have to test it for five minutes in a showroom. You can really test your Casper mattress. They're made right here in the USA. They're um, a combination of latex and memory foam. No springs. That's why it can go in that box. But it also means no lumps. It's really smooth, very comfortable. Just the right sink, just the right bounce. You saw me leap onto it and it, just right. Long-lasting comfort and support. You're going to love it. Buy online, risk-free. That's the thing I think they have to overcome is this notion that, well, wait a minute, I want to lie on it before I buy it. Well, you can for 100 days, and that's a good deal. $500 for a twin, $950 to go all the way up to the king size. And that is, like, a lot less than I paid for my king size. And you can save an additional $50 because you're listening right now. Go to Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R, Casper.com slash Windows. Make sure you use the promo code Windows on checkout to save 50 bucks. Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R dot com slash Windows. And when you get your Casper mattress, you get your little Casper package with the, the booklet and all the information. So Mary Jo, have you slept on yours yet? Yep, I have. Did you like it? Tell I the like truth. You could be honest. I, I I like it a lot. It okay. replaced a futon, right? Oh, so well. it's so much more comfortable. That's not much of a so kind much. of a low bar then. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I had a really good futon. A really, a one with tons of springs in it. And it was a really high quality, expensive futon. It wasn't a crappy one. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. This one is great. It was, and I was, it was so easy to put in. I even did it myself. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of funny. I sent one. We, we actually, I had this challenge because my son uh, moved out of the dorms this year and uh, at to see you Boulder, living in a house with other guys, no furniture. And we were, I guess we were going to go to Goodwill or something and get a mattress. And then I realized, wait a minute, I could just order one from Casper. And it came in a box and they had fun opening it. He's been sleeping on it ever since. I, I asked him, I said, Henry, do you like your mattress? He says, I love it. Hmm. And more importantly, so do the girls. <laughs> Casper, <laughs> no promises here. Casper.com slash windows. Use the promo code windows. And uh, I think you're going to like it. And thanks especially to Phil and uh, Luke and Gabe and Jeff and Neil, the guys at uh, Casper, the founders of Casper. Um, they're really, really great guys. And it's a great company. Casper. I think Terry sent me the, uh, they sent me the book. Yeah. Yeah, Terry. Thanks for your support. Hope you enjoyed the bedtime reading. They sent me Lytton Strachey's Eminent Victorians, which is probably the most soporific <laughs> book ever written. I think written. The, there's a, the, the middle part of the Bible is possibly less interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, this, this put me to know, sleep, like the, I can tell you. It was... <laughs> whoever, son of whoever. But now I know everything there is to know about Cardinal Manning. Wow. Right. All right, let's can uh, let's continue on uh, Windows Weekly. Talk more about Windows here. Um, okay, this is something that people have been saying, and I want to know: Is this true? Windows Seven users, are you getting a, via Windows update? The uh, is that to Windows Ten? Are you getting update? What is? Huh? So, Tell me about that. Not exactly. So, if you in Windows Seven have signed into the Windows Insider program, which is how you yeah. have to get the preview, yeah. Yeah. have started the download. At that point, yes, it, it will be offered to you in Windows Update. 
if if you were to do it on a Windows 8 computer or something oh. and then went to Windows 7, you don't see it there. I mean, there's no uh, secret connection between the two. So th you are not getting this un, you know, unexpectedly. This is just uh, a nicety for those people who have started the easy. download but not finished it yet. And you can install in place, right? You don't have to uh, do a fresh install. Yeah, you can do right. You can do a clean install. I um I spent literally all day long yesterday, literally all day I like long. This. I don't understand yeah. the picture, but I like it. <laughs> so I can explain the picture. Obviously, that is a a seven hamburger sandwich yes. for Windows Seven. Ah, uh, obviously some weird Japanese thing that they did around the um, the launch of Windows Seven. They're uh, not going to do that for Windows Ten, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think so. This guy could barely not. get his mouth around it. So. I hope not. He'd have to be like one of those snakes that can open his jaw. You know. Um, <laughs> So And you can run it on a VM. I know there are people who are running it yeah, on right. VMware, right? Yep. Oh, by the way, I've installed this on everything. I've installed this on the cheap a uh, Aspire that I have on my Surface Pro 3 on my desktop in VMs. I've installed it on the MacBook Air. For Windows 7, I had to go back. I went back to I have a Windows 7 VM. I have VMs of you know virtually everything, as you might imagine. Um, I don't know what I did, but somehow moving it to a different drive, I guess I lost the restore points or something. And it's like Windows 7... RTM version of Windows 7. I spent all day yesterday updating this thing so I could then put the Windows 10 update on it to see what it did. And my God, does that take all day? Like that is all day of updating. That is Windows telling you, you have no more updates to install. Just kidding. Here are 593 more of them. Like it's crazy <laughs> how long it takes. Oh, man. How many yeah. times did you have to reboot? Oh, seven or eight easily. Not more than that. I don't I have no idea. It was I, I sat here all day. I was doing other things. It's just all day long. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. By the way, you can, which I have done, you can be a Windows 7 user, get into the insiders preview. As long as you don't download the um, techpreview.exe file, it's not gonna give you a prompt at all to move to right. the new version. Right. So you can decouple that if you don't want to be moving to it, but you want to look at the forums or you know, talk to Microsoft oh, or good. see what people are oh, talking about. Right. And I'm sure I, I wrote a tip a thousand years ago about how to hide updates in Windows Update. It's right. not really that hard to do. But, right. Um, yeah, people are acting like, oh, my God, it's, how did they do well, it? I did. I freaked out Well, you out triggered the download. I, that's how they know. I know. <laughs> you know? I, but I, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you don't understand what it's doing, you're like, okay, so this sounds like. Yeah. This sounds a little bit like Apple giving the U2 album to people without telling them. <laughs> a little bit. But uh, you know what? You shouldn't be signing up for a technical preview if you don't know what you're doing. Right. Let's and face it. And it calls <laughs> it an important update, too. So some people might see it and go, oh, it's important. I should install it, right? Yeah. And then, hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, there it is. We should, let's reiterate that. These things are really early pre-betas. Mm -hmm. If you... If this is not for just, I, I got a free copy of Windows. This is super simple. If you are thinking about writing me or anyone else an email that says, hey, um, is this thing stable enough that I should be able to run it? Then the answer is no. Yeah. yeah. Like if you are actually wondering, then just don't do it. Yeah. Just yeah. hold. Yeah. Although I have to say this one's pretty good. It's pretty good. But you know what? There, there, there could very well be the, uh, you know, the, the weird showstopper that you don't have happen for four days and then suddenly... I mean, you know. No, Leo, there are no showstoppers. I do everything. No, I, obviously there are, yeah. are weird applications. That one app that you need or whatever might sure. not work and, and all of that. Yeah. And it's also not really <laughs> optimized for touch, as as we've been saying. So if you put it on your Surface Pro 3, which we've heard people doing, Paul they're like, that. hey, it doesn't work that well. Paul, didn't you put it on your Surface? Yeah, actually. So I use my Surface Pro 3 like a uh, an Ultrabook. Oh, I and see. So, so it doesn't matter to you. Honestly, for that, it's fine. I mean, I think the weird bits are... If, you know, obviously on a tablet where you're holding it on the sides, like those edge UIs are, are really nice. Uh, they don't work in the Windows 10 uh, technical preview. So switch, well, I, that's not fair. I'm sorry. The, the, the old switcher um, swipe, which is when you swipe in from the left, now triggers the alt tab screen um, where you can switch between apps. So actually th that does work. But, um, it, you know, it's different. Uh, if you're using a pure tablet, like if you don't have a keyboard attached, this is not going to be a great experience there but it's not completely unusable um, yeah yeah so i mean it's it's optimized for traditional computers all right okay <laughs> okie dokie okay um <laughs> what else we got in here oh a windows 8 one update two Never yes. going to happen. <laughs> never going to happen you may oh, recall no, me freaking out one. we don't call it update <laughs> one because there is no update yeah, this two. is an update yeah so Mary Jo and I have both talked to people at Microsoft who are 
very upset about this weird naming convention thing. And that's that's one thing. I mean, I, I we can sort of disagree with how people brand things. And, and that's really just a, uh, it's kind of a marketing issue. It's it's sort of like, do we call it Windows NT 5.0 or Windows 2000? You know, you can kind of make your case in either direction, whatever. But, you know, frankly, when there are people like Mary Jo, especially, and I who know what's really happening internally, um, you know, the correct thing for that company to do at that point is just, you don't discuss it. You just, this is what it's called. It doesn't matter what we used to call it. What you don't do is come out and say, oh, you may have heard these stories that are completely made up, just rumors and speculation that there was going to be an update to it. There's, ne there's never been anything called update to That's That's all completely baloney. Um, except for one thing, that the <laughs> we know that that's not true. Uh, and now people have uncovered uh, evidence in code that actually speaks to update 2 for Windows 8.1, which, of course, was that August update that they were originally going to call update 2. And so I think I was still in Spain when this happened, but I remember I remember being a little animated about this at the time. <laughs> and so I will right. take the high road now and I will just say, screw you, Microsoft. No. <laughs> there you um, go. I will, you know, <laughs> well, the point is we, we, we always knew what the truth was. You know, I mean, it's not like we're... It's not like we get on the podcast or on our blogs and say, like, what, what can I make up today that sounds plausible? And hopefully no one will ever call me on it if it doesn't happen. You know, like I don't, you know, that, that's not how, it's not how, you know, that's not how you do things. And so I, I, I just found that kind of a weird artifact of the old regime at, at Windows in particular, that they would yeah. uh, go out of their way to, to write something like that in a publicly facing blog. When everyone at Microsoft who works with these people and people like us outside of Microsoft know that that is not true. And now, way, obviously, yeah. By the way, st speaking of hidden code references, we didn't mention this. There's Cortana mm. all over Windows 10 embedded in Ooh, there, right? Ooh, I like that. So right. it looks like Cortana's coming. Like it was kind of, maybe it'll make it in, maybe it won't. But uh, there's like a lot of Cortana code already in there. There's a yeah, lot I think, I think of it was Brad, Brad Sam's. Oh no, he did a. Uh, that was notification center. Oh, it was um, Chapman. Stephen Chapman like Stephen went Chapman. in and who used to do Microsoft Kitchen that yep. that blog where he like dissected code. He went in there and found all the references. Which so is what is that? Cool. I mean, that means like we're going to be able to talk to Windows 10. It means computer yep. on, baby. That's what it means. <laughs> it means maybe it'll mean hey, print my boarding pass for my trip tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe Why not? at some point. Some point down the line, or you know, at the beginning at least, it'll be the same kind of Cortana that we have on Windows right. Phone. You know, where you can get little hints and ask for it's baseball. It's not the kind of thing you want in enterprise because you've got an office <laughs> often with yes. many yeah. people in the same room, and you don't want all of them talking at once. Yeah. You can in type fact, into it too, though, right? Yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, but I'm just saying that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> as we've we've started to see voice interfaces, you know, Google's Chrome has it on the desktop, and certainly my phone. I you know, if I say okay, Google now. It'll wake up mm -hmm. or not. Yep. That's the other fun thing. You never really yeah, know yeah, what it's yeah. going to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, Everyone who uses these things understands the limitations. It always wakes up at the wrong time. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. another thing. <laughs> like, you, dude, Which is you, not as bad as waking you up at the wrong time. No. True. That's really bad. And Siri will do that because I keep my iPhone plugged in next on my bedside table. Yeah. And there's, there's on the one hand, oh, by the way, you could say, hey, Siri, what time is it? And, and they'll tell you. You don't have to look, open your eyes. On the other hand, if you have a conversation or you're listening to an audiobook, oh, she wakes up all the time. I have my screen off, but the Xbox is on all day long. I'll be talking to like, Raphael on Skype maybe or whatever, and I'll say <laughs> certain things. It triggers. Yeah. Suddenly, Xbox music is playing some song, and it's yeah. like, what the, What is this? Yeah. So these, <laughs> you know? these, these speech interfaces yeah. uh, sound cool, and I think they're coming to us mostly because we saw it in Star Trek. But yes. I don't know. I thought for a long time that's going to be the future of UI. You know what, though, sure. here's, but the, the problem, I actually don't, I don't think it's that bad. I, I No, it's cool. I think that people get too excited about something, you know? Right. For example, when Microsoft did Connect, uh, the first version, this is the future. We're going to be standing in front of our computers. You know, that gets tiring, you know? Uh, multi-touch is kind of the same way. There are a lot of people who say, I don't want multi-touch. I'm not going to use multi-touch. I use a keyboard and mouse. I'm not going to use multi-touch. You know, or multi-touch is it. Tablets are going to kill laptops you know now it's kind of like voice control the, the, the truth is these things will all kind of work together seamlessly and it's not so much that we interact with a computer via voice in this case or whatever 
It's that we're going to have all these natural ways of reacting, uh, of right. um, interacting. And you can and use I, I think they multiple work hand in hand. Right? Yeah. 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 Like, it doesn't it's not like about replacing one of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On my phone, yep. I'll say to Cortana, set my alarm for blah. But the rest of the time, I'm not out there right. talking to my phone. I'm typing things. You down, found, right? by the way, I think the single most valuable usage of voice is set a timer yeah. for or set a reminder for. Because yes. those are, yeah. that has a lot of little fiddly things. And it's much easier just to say it. And it, and it's and by the oh, way, uh, that's pretty accurate. Mary Jo will recall in our uh, manic ride from San Francisco to uh, Petaluma last week. The driver, who, by the way, is excellent. Uh, you guys uh, sent Uber? a driver. Uh, no, yeah. it's, uh, I guess, your yeah. usual driver. He's, oh, not, oh. he's not Uber. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was great. Um, yeah, he's but really he, good. Yeah. yeah, he was good. Walter. Walter. Yes, uh, yeah, Walter. He was, yeah, he was a great guy. Yeah, um, Walter is our driver. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we, we really love Walter. He's so good. No, he's great. He's he really discreet. was great. He was great. Yeah. No, he's very great. Yeah. He is discreet. We love Walter. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he interacted with his phone, and he sent text messages right. uh, for virtually everything, all via voice. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was really interesting because this was an, uh, a real-world kind of example of a guy who uh, is driving professionally and shouldn't be texting. texting you know, right. while he's driving, obviously, it's probably illegal. But, but he runs his own – it is illegal, and he runs his own business. Yeah. So he needs to actually stay in touch and, and, and right. do that. So he, so, so here he is actually using the technology, yeah. um, I thought, fairly uh, effectively, right? I mean, you were yeah. probably – Observing we that just well. saw a study. AAA is telling everybody that it's just, depending on the voice technology. Siri yeah. is, turns out to be the worst, but uh, using these voice uh, activated things in your car is as bad as. as well, because it's still a distraction, it's, right? It's a pretty big distraction. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I uh, was driving last night with my in my car. My, in my car, I can connect the phone to the car, but I can't do music over Bluetooth, and so I've got this tangle of wires connecting oh, my fungus yeah. phone to my car. And I'm not texting and I'm not using the phone, but what I am doing is, is playing music through the phone. And, of course, that requires me to look at the screen of my phone. I right. can't use the car controls because, right. you know, it doesn't work with Bluetooth. And interact with the touchscreen while I'm driving. Yeah. And I, was, I had that thought as I was driving last night. Like, this is, this is as distracting as any texting, any, yeah. anything else you would do. I mean, it's, you're not this is no, it's not illegal. It's illegal I mean, in not, California. It should be. I mean, it it's you can't uh, clearly, touch your phone. well, it should you be can't across flip, the board. You can't just, right. some uh, yep. friend got, got a $300 ticket just for flipping the phone, like just playing oh, with wow. it. No, but my point is if a cop saw the glow of the phone in the car and pulled That's me it. over, I, I could show him there were no tech. No, I mean, Massachusetts is not legal. So right, right, right. I could show him like, look, I wasn't text messaging, but I was playing music and you know, he'd have to let me go. Even though technically what I'm doing, you have a poltergeist, a poltergeist activity, Mary Jo. <laughs> Mary Jo's going on? Is like these, you know. Just, uh, when they get, can you guys hear that? Yeah, it's like they've been very quiet. Bed. I think the pie worked. Yeah, See, they're the on the other side working. going. I, I think she's on a radio show. <laughs> right, I think she's talking. Can to you talk somebody? loud, Mary Jo, and say <laughs> things like, "Yes, Conan." So these jerks on the other side of the wall. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Cortana everywhere would like that. I guess you know it's nice to have. Let's just put it that way. And I think yeah. it's going to be a checkbox at every OS is gonna have to have I think that's what's really interesting is how uh what happens on mobile starts to set the expectations for what you want on a desktop computer who would have thought that it's right a virtuous circle leo yeah. was it that said that you know it makes sense that these things all feed into yeah. each other right yeah. so there are uh de or, you know desktop windows platform functionality that's heading into phone and and phone functionality heading, heading into the desktop and this stuff all makes sense i mean it's weird when you see advanced voice stuff in phone and Xbox, but not on Windows. Right. Now, here's the exactly. thing that has the most processing power of all of it. I mean, exactly. why wouldn't this have it? Of course it will. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, a little footnote. Uh, the word Windows seems to be disappearing rapidly uh, all over Microsoft. The latest is what? In, <laughs> in Every time a PC maker abandons Windows, Microsoft has to take the name from another product. Uh, Angel gets its wings. <laughs> <laughs> this one makes sense, though, right? It, it was weird. This was called Windows Intune because it manages iOS and Android and Windows. So why right, was it Windows? The, because of the first version, it was actually PC management. Right. Only PC, uh, right. Yeah, they didn't add devices until the third or fourth generation. I don't remember yeah. anymore. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, in the beginning, this was That's for uh, managing PCs outside of the enterprise. Yeah. So now no more Windows Azure, no more Windows Intune. It's Azure and Intune. <laughs> Try this, Mary Jo. Just go... They're here. <laughs> it's like they're building the set from Saw next door, you know. <laughs> okay, and you know what? Here's, we'll here's the worst part. Yet. 
Yes. The guy who moved out of here had lived in here 30 years. Oh, so Lord. He was under rent control, so they're probably, like, going to be gutting this for, like, who knows how long. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. The cigarette smoke has soaked six inches down. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. If only you had a nearby place to go and drink beer. Oh, yeah. There you go. My office is calling me. My rattling humming. <laughs> my office. My office. Right. It's rattling and humming. It is. Uh, surface pen. Out of band update. I just said five words. I have no idea what they mean. <laughs> I know. Uh, what yeah. is, what I'm going to let Mary Jo should do this one because okay. she was the one who came up with the it's answer. Her, for it's, it's her story. Okay. Oh, it's actually Paul's. But ye yesterday, uh, Microsoft released an out-of-band update, you know, because usually when they update the Surface firmware, they do it on Patch Tuesday, which is until next week. But they did something yesterday. And what they did was a, um, a new driver for the Surface Pro 3 pen. So everybody was like, wow, what is this, right? And they said it was for new configurations, I believe, of Surface Pro 3, which got everybody yeah. like, wow, what, what does that mean? Like, is it, is it the Surface Mini making a comeback or what is this? Turns out it seems that it's just the code that's going to let people program the pen. So that if you have something you want the pen to do instead of... Uh, what it does by default, you, you're going to actually have an app in the store sometime soon that'll let you program what you want your pen to do on the surface. That's what it is, I think. This is, this is like, it's the logical progression of user it is. feedback, right? Yeah. So you release Surface Pen back in May or June or whatever that was, and you press the button on the top, and it launches OneNote, but it launches the modern version of OneNote. So, of course, people say, well, hold on a second. I don't use the modern version of OneNote. I use the desktop yeah. version of OneNote. Can you change it so that I can have this choice? And so they did. They changed it so that, you know, you could choose which one of those you wanted. And then people said, okay, but maybe I want to use it with some other application. Could you change it so that it ar you can arbitrarily determine which app to launch when you press the button? And that's what this is. And so uh, there's no UI for this. It just enables that configuration. And I, I think Microsoft or and or third parties will eventually release a modern app that will enable that functionality. Yeah. What's that? Uh, snacks. Oh, I thought that was so fun. <laughs> Box of food. <laughs> I feel like that you like really the guy or something. Just, yeah, I am. Did the guy just... I think he's like <laughs> right here. <laughs> bonk, bonk, bonk. No, I want to... Okay, well, while, while I, this is what you do. You go next door with a little bit of nature box. And you say, how would you like to take an hour off and devour some praline pumpkin seeds or some blueberry nom noms? I'm having blueberry nom noms. I love the blueberry nom noms. Blueberry nom noms? Yeah. This is Nature Box. This is the, uh, you, these snacks can be delivered. You should, with kids, this is a good idea. Uh, because these are all nutritionist approved. They come every month. They have a business plan, too. We use that because our, our, our uh, employees love the Nature Box. Never any high fructose corn syrup. Trans fats, artificial flavors or colors. Uh, you can choose gluten-free if you want or vegan or whatever your dietary needs are. No nuts, obviously. Um, you can choose from savory, sweet, and spicy. Well, here's what you should do is go to naturebox.com uh, right now, naturebox.com slash twit, and start your free trial of NatureBox. You can taste this for free. See what you think. Drop the candy bar. Throw away the potato chips. Start eating healthful, wholesome snacks from naturebox.com. Calm. I'll give you a few flavors just to give you. You can go to the website and see, but sriracha roasted cashews. Do I have any takers? <laughs> I think the guy next door wants. I think them. the guy next door. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna I say. He wants some. He's like, I'm listening. <laughs> bump, bump, bump. Knock three times if you want cranberry macaroon granola. Or, well, I said blueberry nom noms. That's what I'm gonna have. These are um, mini blueberry flavored oat cookies, and they're really. Oh, he wants that one. He wants that one. <laughs> Give me one knock for yes. <laughs> knock three times knock on the ceiling if you want for blueberry it. nom noms. Praline pecans oh, or Lone Star snack mix. <laughs> so go to naturevox.com slash twit. Uh, we were doing a discount. Now we just said, you know what? We're going to send you a sample. Free sample. And if you're a business, by the way, check out the business plan because that's a great thing. Stay full. Stay strong. Start snacking smarter. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. Uh, Adobe has updated Creative Cloud um, and apparently uh, now supporting these high-res displays we're all using. Yes? 
What happens? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's oh thinking God, about the blueberry nom noms. <laughs> I, know what you're, I know what you're thinking of. Well, what are you talking about? So, uh, I don't know too much about Adobe Max, but the Adobe Max event, I'm, in fact, I'm surprised Microsoft didn't schedule something during it, um, <laughs> yeah. was yesterday or two days ago. Um, and you may recall at the Surface launch event back in May, June, whatever that was, they brought out, a, I think they brought out a guy from Adobe, but if not, they showed off a, a future version of, at the time of Adobe Photoshop CC that would enable high DPI support because, of course... Surface Pro 3 is a high DPI display, what Apple calls like a retina display. And it makes traditional desktop applications look terrible because all the little toolbars are tiny and they're impossible to hit accurately unless you can see perfectly or are very young. And um, sometime in, sometime mid-year, I don't remember exactly when, uh, Adobe did update uh, all of their Creative Cloud programs. And it's really hard to find, but there's kind of an experimental feature in Photoshop that enables high DPI. And on the Surface Pro, to, to my eyes, it makes, it's terrible. It makes the screen look like it's 640 by 480. I was really disappointed by how poorly it worked. And I thought, this is kind of weird. You know, these guys are working together on this stuff and how could it not be more impressive? But then at Adobe Max, they had Microsoft CEO uh, Sachin Nadella came out, spoke with the Adobe CEO, got some demos of some of the stuff they were working on. They showed off uh, Photoshop and Illustrator as well as some other stuff um, that it was brand new, including like a face tracking application that uh, looks at you, matches your face to an on-screen animation of like a cartoon character, or whatever. And as you move around and move your mouth and talk, the character does as well. And it gives you that, you know, Andy Serkis's Gollum kind of effect where you can. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's really impressive. Uh, but as far as uh, the Adobe CC stuff goes, um, yeah, they, they, they finally, you know, Photoshop and these schools are so old school. These, um, applications are so old school. They, they, they literally in some cases uh, date back decades. And what they've done, I guess, with this new version is they separated the user experience, the user interface layer from the rest of the application. And so the user interface for Adobe and Illustrator, at least, I'm not sure about the other apps can adapt based on the hardware you're on. And so I guess on a surface, uh, optionally, you can present uh, these touch UIs. And so that, you know, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you know that uh, they use like a toolbox and uh, windows for layers and things like that. And now these things can slide in from the side, not take up screen. The buttons are big enough. You can hit them with your fingers and so forth. And you can actually interact with, you know, the layers in a Photoshop uh, uh, file or uh, the the animatics in what, I'm not even sure what application that was in, um, and move things around and animate them and, and change them with your finger. And it's, you know, it looks pretty good. So I haven't looked at this yet, but um, it looked like it was approximately a thousand times nicer than what they had about two months ago. So uh, it looks like Adobe's finally getting the message on the, uh, you know, high DPI stuff in, in particular. Yeah, good. Yeah. And and, good. Uh, and the Surface is high DPI. I mean, it's, yeah, even it's though 21, it's a smallish screen. It's 60 something. Yeah. 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 yeah and with it, so, you know, by default, uh, Microsoft scales the screen to 150%. And so when you sit down in front of it and look at the desktop, it looks very normal. But what you maybe not realize is that it's it's scaled. And Microsoft applications like Word and Excel and Office apps scale. And so you look at those and they look normal. You don't think anything of it. But when you run Photoshop, you know, you get that, you know, the teeny little toolbar on the top because because they're just rendering, you know, it's just a uh, a bitmap display. So it's just one-to-one, -one. you know, it doesn't scale intelligently like uh, the OS does. So, uh, they're finally, finally fixing that. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I subscribe. I got a CC <laughs> license. I use it. Yeah. I want to check this stuff out. You can look at that new animation. Oh, that's thing. Right. That you're a photo awesome. I forgot you're a Photoshop guy. You're a well, Photoshop I'm, guy. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't. Claim to be an expert, but I've been I, trained as a graphic artist. Of course, that was <laughs> that was in the right. days of Cournor pens. Right, and right. I have charcoal. sold a painting, so I am a professional Did artist. You? Really? As a child, yeah. Oh, as a child, you sold a painting. So you're yeah, not only a professional artist; you're a prodigy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm a prodigy. Seriously, yeah. like what? What's the story yeah. behind that? Was it a kitty cat? What was the painting? Oh, I don't even remember. I mean, I've, I've sold more than I've sold several paintings. You have. I mean, I don't, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to paint. Do you I still paint? No, 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 no. No. Wow. No. 
I told you my art school story. You know, I went to art school and after high school and uh, I, I ended up flunking out because I was just, this was like a path to never make any money. Right, you know, like right. I, this was just a stupidity. And the other thing was I felt like I was uh, better than anyone I was with. I was better than the instructor whose advice I was not particularly keen to take. And I just thought this is a tragedy. I, I, this, I just didn't get it. So that was the end of that. So you, like many others, chose to make a living rather than to follow. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a it's a selfish thing. Um, yeah, there's somebody said there's a video. Let me see. Oh, is this it? Adobe applications on uh, Surface. Is this the is this the video? I don't know. Is this from? Uh, let me see. I'll recognize it if you throw is it. it Jeff, up. Is it uh, Jeff? Goldblum? No, this so. Uh, this is a video. This is not okay. So actually. I, this stuff, I am not 100%. This is, none of this is real. Oh, this is that's more, a surface this, video that they put out. Yeah, right? but this is, These this are, is stuff we hope to do. Oh, okay. Not, this is what we have now. But there is a if video you, somewhere of, if, of, yeah, if you can find the video of Satya Nadella and the CEO yeah. of uh, Adobe getting the demo, it's, it's fascinating. And the, the part about the animation bit I was referring to is, is really, really interesting. And you know, at, at Adobe Max, the giveaway that Microsoft allowed them to have is they gave everybody who came to that show a Surface Pro 3 plus a, a year of Office 365 and one terabyte of storage. That was the giveaway. Right. Wow. Which is pretty huge. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, between all the Microsoft employees and uh, Adobe people, that's, you know. This is Project Animal. A lot of Surface Pro Project Animal you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they were excited. It was a standing ovation at the end wow. of it, like when they announced, yeah. hey, this is your giveaway. That's a that's a pretty good giveaway. It is. Yeah. Yep. And I assume the graphic artist types at Adobe Max got decent Surface Pros. I don't know what version they got, but I'm guessing it wasn't the El Cheapo i3 version. Well, you'd still be happy to get that. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. I'll move on. I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm looking can't for it. It's if, if you uh, Adobe Animal, had it on their the site, it's it's the day one keynote. It's about, you know, three quarters of the way through the presentation. Yeah. Mm. Character. It animation. used to be on the Adobe uh, homepage. I'm sure yeah. it is. I'm just, I'm just. Yeah, uh, it's like a 20 a minute video. There's some guys talking and they showed a few things. <laughs> yes, there is. Right. <laughs> Did they have That's blueberry true. nom noms? That's all yeah, I care about. I'm, you know what's funny to me when I was watching the video, all I kept thinking was, and you, Paul will laugh when I say this, and I'm not a I'm not a creative professional or a graphic designer, but I was like, what? You know what? This looks so much harder with touch than it looks without touch. Well, I I think the point of touch again, like by the way, you know, going back to the, what we were saying earlier, is not so much to replace you know keyboard yeah. and mouse. It's to yeah. augment it. In other words, right. now someone else comes over and says, hey, what are you look working on? You're like, well, okay, I, here's my yeah. uh, document, you know, whatever they call it, the file, and I'm not sure about these two things. And you can kind of move around with your finger. Um, I think it's more for that type of, you know, thing. It's, yeah, I agree. It's, uh, I agree. I don't think anyone's going to I was just watching the guy demoing it, trying to touch, like, the command, and it was so small. I'm like, you know what? Right. I think Which, by the way, was, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, small yeah. touch uh, ta targets are always a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. It is great if you want to use touch. It's nice that it's enabled now. But I, some things I'm just like, I feel like we're using touch for touch's sake and Yep. In some of these demos and cases, yep. we're seeing. Yep. I'm with you on that, actually. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. PowerPoint is being replaced? No. Mm -hmm. No? no? <laughs> uh -huh. That's what? But what is this A sway? lot of people would love that. What but... is sway? <laughs> Careful. Yeah, they would. What is sway? Sway. Yep. Yeah. Sway. <laughs> Please, very odd. Sway. sway. Mm -hmm. Product name, right? <laughs> well, obviously Sway it makes is, Sways. Why do you even have to ask? I know. Sway is a new presentation app that Microsoft announced um, last week, too. It kind of got overshadowed a bit by the Windows 10 stuff. But um, it's the first fully brand new Office app that they've had in, in quite a while, actually. And it came um, out of some of the work that the OneNote team have been doing and the Office Labs team have been doing, but it's it's still somewhat different. It it was a product that was codenamed Remix, which was something we heard about a long time ago. And it's going to let you 
if you're a real uh, noob designer like me, someone who like PowerPoint design is very challenging anyway, like for you. Any normal person, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people. Well, you you're really good at making PowerPoint presentations. I am terrible actually, at it. No, but this, I'm actually, I'm not. But I okay, think you're anyway. pretty good. Okay. Anyway, it's going to let you flow in text and images, and it'll give you options for, hey, do you like this design or that design? Do you want to highlight this p image? And it, it does the work for you with like a machine learning type service. So you just say, here's the images I want. I want to arrange them in some appealing, graphically appealing way. And I just want you to do the work and the app does it for you, which is pretty cool. So um, they're going to come out with it as both a web app that you can use through your different uh, browsers like Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. And then they're also going to create um, mobile applications. So there's going to be, starting with iOS, there's going to be a Sway app for your phone that will let you look at these things they call Sways when you create them, which is kind of odd. Of um <laughs> on your app, on your phone, so you can share it with people. Because we call Word they, Docs words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you do call PowerPoints PowerPoints. But yeah. 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 We yeah. shouldn't, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was weird. It's like you can share sways and have things called my sways. And, and the good part to me is you don't have to have the app to see these things. It's if you use the web app, so it's if HTML somebody sends 5, you or is it a link, it is HTML5. Uh, HTML5. It is HTML5. So if somebody sends you a link to a sway, you can see it even without having to go get an app or have a, or a an player app. even uh, if you just have yep. a modern browser right yep yep yeah oh so we haven't tried it yet because you have to sign up for the preview and then you get invited into the preview and so far neither of us have been invited into the preview yet i'm expecting uh, this any moment now but <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, it, it looks pretty interesting, actually. I, I At first I was kind of like, hmm, I don't know about this. But then I'm thinking, you know, if you go on a trip and you want to share your pictures with family or friends and you just want to like not have to send them e everybody emails or send them links to your OneDrive and like have them try to figure out how to get into that. It's just, hey, I can have my words and my pictures arrange themselves in a graphically pleasing way and they can just click on the link and see what I want to show them. I think it's okay. The, the other thing that's, I mean, there's a lot of actually interesting things about this, but um, uh, the the sway you create is not like this thing. It's not like a file. You can't save it to your hard drive and then share it right. offline or something. It, it's li literally a dynamic thing that lives up in the cloud. It's in Azure. Um, it looks different depending on the type of device you look at it on. And you can recreate it at any time to have a different style. And so if you look at it on a tablet or a PC, it's got this kind of... a uh, you know, landscape presentation as you would expect. But if you look at it on an iPhone or a Windows phone or any kind of smartphone, it's got a, you know, a portrait orientation. And so it's the same basic design, um, but the the creation of it is handled dynamically. So it's not, um, you know, it's not like a, f <laughs> a file or a um, container or whatever of any kind. It's it's like this dynamic. It sounds very modern. Web sounds app. like a, yeah. the way uh, documents should be, really. Well, right. So it's it's sort of, in other words, people. Some people say, well, why don't they just add this to PowerPoint? Why not just, you know? Uh, because. And the idea is, we're trying. Well, no, we. You know, it, the idea is Microsoft's idea is they're trying to um, rethink this in this mobile first, cloud first right. world. You right. know that. It's uh, completely it, cross-platform. Without any of this backwards compatibility stuff holding us back, if we were going to restart with this type of thing now, what might this look like? It's funny how, you know, I, I, on Triangulation on Monday, we had Phil Libin, the uh, CEO of Evernote. And he said, we're going to look back and say the app era was just kind of like the CD-ROM era. It was just a, a, you know, kind of an aberration. Yeah. And he said, we're going to something beyond that. I said, well, what is it? And it sounds like we're kind of getting back to web apps, but even less apps and, and not file centric or app centric, but just kind of task centric. This sounds like something very, like this, very modern. It's new. Like in other words... You, it, when you look at Word online, it's it's sort of it's a, not sort of it is a web based version of Word. It's right. a it's in the web, it's but in the it's, cloud, but it's, but it's still it's, Word. It's very familiar yeah. as w what this thing was yeah. back. Something that they used to ship on floppy disks, by the way. I mean, it's a uh, right. It's but just a new way not, of distributing. This way is 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 not something different. Just yes. rendering PowerPoint in HTML. This is more than that. 
is right. thinking it, differently it, about uh, what you're trying to yeah, do the whole the thing, data, the, the workflow and all that. I, I sort of, could, as he, I, I had a briefing about this before it was released. And as uh, Michael Latala was describing it, I said, I, I, I actually asked him not to show me the product for a moment. I wanted to conceptualize what he was saying, because to me, what it sounded like was uh, Nokia Storyteller or um, yeah. the, the Google Plus Photos feature where you can make a story, right? And, and, they're, little, and they're pushing as a mobile as much as anything else, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's a and, guy uh, using Sway at the aquarium to make a, a presentation for his students with yeah. his phone. And, and it's it's not always about photos, by the way, although, you know, visual is better, obviously, right. on the web. But it's a, a mixture of photos and text into this uh, what you're seeing now on screen, if you can see it, is lots of text um, and videos. You know, it's 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 so not a document, right? I right. mean, even though yeah. you right. exactly. could take a document and present it in a brand new way. Well, and some people uh, might say, oh, this is a web page designer. It's not that either. No, it's not like the future of blogging. It's not, right. <laughs> you know, the future of PowerPoint. It's not a lot of things because it's 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 easy to fall like. It's hard I to know really anything like without this. knowing, you know, you have to compare it to something you understand and because you it's, yeah. and it's hard mm -hmm. because it's not exactly the same. You know, it's yeah. great. They're showing it on Windows. They're showing it on, on an iPad. I think he was yeah. using an iPhone. I mean, they, it, it really, this is an Adela thing. Right. And it uses Azure, right? So that's, uh, there's Twitter. Yeah. And, it's I mean, hosted in yeah. Azure. It's free. Yeah. I mean, for now, we'll yeah. see if that changes. I'm going to sign up. This looks really cool. Yeah, yeah it looks neat. interesting. It's not document centric exactly. It's more like content centric. I don't know. I, you're right. I don't know yeah. how to describe it. Yeah, it is hard to explain, and it, it's hard to like categorize it. Right? Like, is it a presentation app? Is it? And the other thing yeah. is, you know, they're mostly showing consumer applications, but it's very much a business thing oh, too. Yeah. Like, you could use it right. for brochures right. and website design, well, well, and even uh, yeah. information needs to be communicated in yep. business. Mm -hmm. um, dashboards for the exec, uh, you know, reports. It seems like there's a lot of applications for this. Yeah. By the way, I think it was uh, the way it was sold internally, if I remember the story correctly, was they showed this to Bill Gates. And they, what they had done was they had taken the Gates Foundation's uh, annual report. Uh -huh. They turned it into a sway. There you go. And he was like, yep, okay, I get it. <laughs> like, this is really, this is a really neat way to do this. Uh, and that was Ray Ozzy. And now look what he's <laughs> happened to him now. Yeah. It does feel like a little Aussie-ish. Uh, I'm going to request an, an invite because I like yep. this. You think if I do my Outlook address, I'm more likely to get it? Nah. Nah. They don't care anymore. The first, I, nah, the first mobile version is going to be on iPhone. Yeah. So. Right. Yep. Right. Um, that's cool. It's Sway.com. Yep. They even have the mm -hmm. domain name. Yeah. Yep. I did it my Sway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as long as we're talking Office, Office 16 uh, update. Anything yeah, to say? We, we've been hearing some hints that um, it Office 16 might finally be ready to start going out to testers outside of Microsoft. I, I've, I've, I've talked to a couple of people outside who say they have seen it, and one says he has it. Um, and what's interesting is we know that they're building the next version of Office, or at least we think they are, as a universal app. So one would assume there's also going to be an Office mobile and we all we do know there's a, a Gemini, which is a touch first office. But supposedly um, the it, Office 16 test version that people are starting to see is the real desktop apps. It's not Gemini and it's so far not Office Mobile either. But it's it's good. We're starting to hear some motion because we've been wondering, you know, where is the next office? How far away is it? And it's I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of an announcement pretty soon of a public preview or public test uh, out there. But not, again, not for Gemini, not for the touch first, not yet. That still sounds like a spring slash mid 2015 as far as when it's going to hit in final form. It is kind of odd how some of that stuff has fallen by the wayside. You know, Office know. for Mac in mm -hmm. particular, which is obviously yeah. a big product and, and very overdue. And you were mentioning today earlier about um, OneDrive for Business. Yeah, for um, Mac. Which is curiously missing in action on yeah. Mac, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although they just up yeah. Dre, updated OneDrive for iOS, and it now uses mm -hmm. Touch ID. Nice. Yeah, on iOS 8, yeah. 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 I like, I like it. Yeah. That's the best thing about an iPhone right there. Touch ID, the fingerprint. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I love that. That and the camera. Although you guys have very good cameras. T touch ID is like, uh, in Windows 8, they added the ability to log in with a pin, right? 
And a pin is obviously beautiful because it's four digits so and it's simple to enter. Quicker, but yeah. the, the other thing that's awesome about it, and if you use a Mac or um, an Android device, uh, you'll appreciate this. You hit the fourth digit and it signs in. You don't have to hit enter too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I like, that. like the, hitting enter makes me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, the, like having to hit that. Like to me, it's just the pin, you know. Feels kind of old fashioned, uh, doesn't it? So the pin in Windows 8 and, and Touch ID takes it to the next level. It's mm -hmm. just the, the ability to press your thumb on that thing and, and log in is so wonderful. Yeah, and more and more banks and so forth are using it uh, on their apps too, which is great. Yeah, that's great. Uh, let's see. Office, we did um, Outlook.com. Better OneDrive. Yeah, we can blow through these pretty quickly. Right. So uh, Outlook.com, ConsumerOutlook.com. Uh, now support is always well not as always but has long supported the ability to share files through OneDrive right so if you have a file that's too big to send as an attachment share it through OneDrive automatic it works really well now it works with files of any size that OneDrive supports and so a couple of weeks back they added support for 10 gigabyte files you can share a 10 gigabyte file via email I can't imagine what that would be but some kind of a torrent video of a Star Wars Blu-ray or something I don't know uh, it will support that. Although, don't do that because that's obviously illegal. I just <laughs> I was trying to think of something big. Um, on the business side, they've updated OWA, which is the Outlook client. It uh, used to stand for Outlook Web Access. But Outlook Web or OWA is the client on the web, but it's also the client on iOS and Android uh, in mobile app form so that you can send a, f a share a file through the email in Exchange Online. Uh, that's on OneDrive for Business. So it works the way it does on the consumer side. Um, so like I said, Outlook.com and OneDrive have had this for years. Now it's available on OWA and OneDrive for Business. I think that's everything right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, oh, hey, I love this story. We now know how much Microsoft makes from Samsung. <laughs> Yeah, Samsung turns that. out to be that billion dollar a year business we've been looking for. I, we predicted this. <laughs> we, we said long ago, Android licensing, Microsoft's Huge. next billion dollar business. Huge. Yep. People have always speculated yep. that maybe they'd get five bucks a handset. Uh, mm -hmm. This is more than that. Yeah. Yeah. So, my, you know, Microsoft and, and uh, Samsung have been engaged in a suit that they uh, that Microsoft filed against Samsung <laughs> in August. And a lot of what was in that suit was redacted. But on uh, it was Friday night, late Friday night, they unsealed the document. And one of the things that was in that document was how much Samsung is paying Microsoft to license, um, basically to cover Android patent licenses. And it's a billion dollars a year. Wow. One billion. And they agreed to do this for eight years. Wow. So they're only in year three. I think they're going into year three now. Um, Microsoft is suing them because they said they are pay they paid them late and they owe them um, six point nine. How much was it? In yeah, something interest. like that. In it's interest, six point nine million. Yeah, six point nine million interest. in interest that they haven't paid. Yep. And uh, then we're already into the next year, and Samsung's trying to put the brakes on this and say, you know, due due to our business agreement with Microsoft, when they bought Nokia's handset division, this should um, throw this agreement out the window, and oh, we should be able to renegotiate this. Good point. That's hilarious. I don't know why they think that because um, I'm not sure what, I, well, I, I don't know it, that there was, supposedly there was some clause in the contract that said if either company bought other companies well, and it cha material the phone, changed if it. If they're in the phone business, that changes things, right? If they're, yeah, if they're yeah. making handsets. Uh, right. Plus so Microsoft there may says, be defensive no. um, agreements between Nokia and Samsung because of course is all of this stuff is yep. cross-licensed like crazy. Exactly. Yep. And Samsung and Nokia do have their own patent licensing right. deal separate right. from this agreement. Yeah. Right. Um, so Microsoft's trying to force Samsung to hold on and continue to pay these royalties um, for the eight-year period. Samsung saying, no, it should be renegotiated. Uh, but yeah, so that's only, you know, Samsung is only one of, man, 25 or 26 companies that's paying Microsoft patent licensing royalties. Although it's the biggest. They're the biggest, sure, yeah. Well, yeah, but you know, they're the biggest, but they're not 80%, right? I mean, what percent right. of the Android market does, is controlled by Samsung? Is it 30%? Is it? I don't know. It's a lot. I don't know. I don't, no, I, don't, I don't know, but. I was just looking and trying to do the math. If they sold in one quarter, yeah. they sold like 80 million phones. So there it is. they're selling a lot of phones in Samsung. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. in fact, it is probably less than five bucks a handset, believe it or not. But, but when you sell a lot. But, yeah, it adds up. Yeah. 
I think I read something that the fee per phone, it, it's calculated on how much the phone costs and a few other factors. So it may not be a standard, right. like every right. phone is $5, but yeah, it's they, a lot of money. They sold 80, <laughs> 89 million phones in the first quarter of uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. 89 million 89 phones million. in one. That's probably quarter. not a big quarter for them, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the first yeah. quarter? First quarter. It's probably the worst quarter. Yeah. yeah. But let's say they're doing 30 million phones a month. Um, okay. You know, that means like more like two or three bucks a phone. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just off, you know, back of the envelope. It's reasonable when you do the math. Yeah. It's not a lot. They're not overpaying. The question really is, uh, and this is the question many will argue, is does Microsoft really have patents? I think the patent they're claiming is the patent on the, on, on Unix, right, or on Linux. Well, we yeah, don't know. You know, there's there's a there's a blog called Foss Patents, right? Um, great Florian blog. Mueller, yep. right? He he's the guy who knows everything about this, yeah. and he is working for Microsoft. We should point out, like they're he paying now. him as a consultant, yeah, yeah. right? He is now, but you know, he's he's said. They, Microsoft is, as um, he thinks they only have one patent that's enforceable, at least so far, against Android. Wow. He said, you know, a, a lot of these haven't gone to, gone to uh, court yet, so you can't say they won't be enforceable. But he's kind of throwing into question, like, you know, Microsoft's saying maybe they have hundreds of patents that, upon which they think Android infringes. Yeah, but he's not. saying, you know, they haven't proved it. Right. right? They haven't proven this yet. Right. Um, so that whatever they're telling these OEMs, we don't really know what they're telling them, but they're saying, you know what, you guys, you might want to license our patents because we think Android infringes on them. And whatever they're saying is convincing. It's just, it's just easier to do that probably than it is to figure Although it out. Although a billion dollars. Yikes, uh, right? Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, Samsung's, Samsung's um, warned that their latest, their next quarter is going to be terrible. It's going to be good. Right? Yeah, 60% drop in revenue. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> there goes your money, Microsoft. You have to get in the, <laughs> you have to get a real business, find some real By products way, Brad, to sell. Uh, Brad Sam says that they earn about three dollars and twenty one cents on each Android device that Samsung sells, based mm -hmm. on knowledge or just some quick math. No, that's based on guess. their actual uh, sales from oh. twenty thirteen. Yeah, so it's not. Yeah, that's not, I mean, that I seems think, are I think that's reasonable. Still a guess. Yeah, it's a guess. Yeah. Well, okay, but I mean, it's just, no one knows for sure. Yeah. But I mean, you know, when you three dollars a, a phone. Adds up. Okay. No, I mean, that sounds... Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. Maybe. Yeah. So people yeah. were guessing five. Um, yeah. It's probably somewhere it's in, around In the there. ballpark. It's not like Microsoft was squeezing them or anything. It's not like <laughs> a... <laughs> you know. Yeah. Hey, the Hotel Lane called. They've got a room set aside for you, Paul, for October oh, 20th. So, good news. <laughs> the Tenderloin misses you. <laughs> Something tells me if I were to book a room at the... What was it called? The Hain? Lane. <laughs> the Lane. Uh, when there wasn't a show in town, it would be about $39. Yeah. For the <laughs> You're probably right. Uh, did you want fresh sheets? Yeah. Towels would be room, five bucks. A room right off of the uh, fire escape <laughs> so someone could easily steal your laptop while you were sleeping? <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Thanks. Guests of Twit stay at the fabulous Lane Hotel in downtown <laughs> San Francisco. <laughs> yep. The reason I mention right. that is uh, Satya Nadella is coming back to San Francisco with Scott Guthrie. And there's going to be a one-hour briefing <laughs> for press and analysts October 20th in San Francisco. Welcome back, Paul and Mary Jo. Nope. Worse <laughs> than that, there's also, they were, they were going to do a, a server thing even sooner than that. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it's like, he, somebody likes San Francisco. Because yeah. uh, Satya's deal on been here several space. times. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> it's the exact same event space as the Windows one, too. What is it? What is the event space? <laughs> oh, is it really? That's hilarious. Yeah, it is. Uh, 969 Market or something like that. Um, I got to look. Oh, uh, Leo, it. listen. You you have to have a magnifying glass to even find the doorway to this place. It's... <laughs> it's... um. Is Hole this? in the wall. doesn't even it's begin a to dance describe. club by night. It really looks... It does. It, it's got that... Does. Every surface inside is black, kind of thing, oh, like a dance I bet club. It is. Like, I bet it is. I bet there are, yeah. I, yeah, I bet it's, it's not the it's DNA lounge, is it? No, I can only imagine what a black wherever light the would windows thing was. Place. Yeah, nine 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 six nine, something like that. But so, so you go into yeah. it, right, Mary Jo? No. Okay. You know what? Luckily, they're <laughs> webcasting this. Oh, they're going to They're webcasting in. this right. one, oh, okay. which is good. And what will they talk about? What is it about? Hmm, that's a good question. They're going to talk about um, 
how they see themselves as being differentiated from other cloud players. Yeah. Um, so we're probably going to hear more hybrid cloud um, scale, blah, 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 the stuff we already know. Um, they're going to also have news of some sort. I don't know what that'll be at this point, but, you know, they've got so many different services in preview on Azure right now, like machine learning and um, intelligence system service, which is their IoT and their Internet of Things service. They could just be announcing, hey, they're ready now for general availability. Uh, it could be a pricing thing. We don't really know what the news part is going to be. But I can tell you, if Nadella is there, it means it's a, a very high priority thing for them because whenever he goes to an event, it means pay attention, everybody, right? And yeah. he didn't come to the Windows 10 thing because that was a very early preview, right. but he is going to this. So obviously it's, it's pretty, it's going to be a pretty right. big deal, whatever it is. I, I would we just don't point know. out, by the way, that him not being at the Windows event um, is interesting because he didn't have to be at the Windows event. No, he didn't. You know, What's that it mean? was still a huge deal. It was still huge. Oh yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, we didn't need the star power. They didn't. They didn't have to invite Bono. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think of such as first year Obama. <laughs> <laughs> and before everything went south. Right. <laughs> the honeymoon still. Uh, yeah. Still on. 29% of Microsoft's employees are women. And yeah, that's a lot a better than most Silicon Valley I companies. I think that's fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah. It's pretty close to what Google is um, when I was looking at the Google numbers. Oh, I thought Google was far lower. It's, oh, okay. Yeah, it's a, okay. okay. Yeah. And, you know, th so the 29% is all employees worldwide, and that includes technical and non-technical yeah, employees, yeah. right? And if you have, te if you say technical only, then the percentage is around 17, which is still, still you know, good. not, not terrible. And they're making a really, a big concerted effort to try to up these numbers, yes. obviously. As is everybody uh, these days. And I think that's good. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's basically them saying we have some numbers, we're not happy with them. We're going to keep try uh, instituting a number of programs to get more women involved at, at higher levels and at managerial levels. But they've just recently added more women to the senior le leadership team at Microsoft and, and also to the board. So they are really trying to make a, a point of being more inclusive. Good. And you think yeah. this is genuine? It's not just lip service? Yeah, I do. Good. I, I think it's genuine. Yeah. Um, they also published, I think they've published these before, their percentage of um, employees based on race, 60.6% .6 white, 29% um, Asian uh, five point one percent Hispanic, three point five percent American or African Black, and one point two percent multiracial. So they they're making a point of saying, you know, we've got we've got an Indian CEO right now, and we're going to try to make it so that we have a more diverse workforce, a representative workforce. So that's all goodness, I think. Good. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. Yeah. Um, one note goes to school with class notebooks. You'll notice there's no link to that one. I was I know <laughs> really amazed that ne yeah. neither one of us had read a story about I this know. for some reason. Although I have it yeah. on my list to do. Yeah. Uh, since I have not written a story about it, I, I just give you my vague understanding of what's happening here. Is they're allowing uh, classrooms to have class notebooks that they can share between students and teacher and ah. use one note yep. in school. That's all I know. Yeah. HP. We should really <laughs> talk about this. You buried the lead here. Uh. Yeah. This was Leo Apotheker's original idea was to split HP, to spin off. The uh, HP I business. missed that idea, man. He was such a genius. <laughs> Meg Whitman, uh, he, he gets uh, sacked. Meg Whitman comes in. He's like in. Uh, HP's Gilabilio, you know, he's yeah, just kind of yeah. rambling one day on a conference yeah. call with a friend. He's like, ah, maybe How'd we'll you get like rid of to be piece. CEO? That's <laughs> just, just sad. That so they brought in Meg. Meg said, no, not going to do it. But now she says, but the time is right now. We're going to spin yeah. off uh, two divisions of HP. One will be the printer and computer business. That's a pretty big business. That's H. That's the, <laughs> I think, what is it? No, it's HP. Yeah, one's going to be called HP. P. It's HP Inc. That's HP Inc. And then there's right. co consulting and services and servers will be uh, HP. Enterprise. Enterprise. Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Yep. yep. Uh, this actually That's makes fine. a lot You know what, sense. this is fine. I, I think people look at this and say, yep. yep. Both of these companies are bigger than Microsoft, by the way, on their own. Isn't that uh, both of these wow. companies are in the Fortune 50. Yep. Uh, you know, we'll see how the, you know, they have vague ideas about how the PC slash printer business can grow in the future. We'll see if that happens. But um, honestly, you know, 
aside from the stupidity around apothecaries, should we drop the PC business baloney? Um, when I look at what HP's done over the past couple of years, just PC wise, it actually looks pretty good. You know, I th the PCs they're making right now look pretty They've solid. So They've gotten better. Yeah. yeah. And of course, it's a big business and their printer business is huge. Yeah. Yep. I like thinking of it as Hadoop and printers. That's, that's <laughs> nice. how I see it, the split. Yeah. H and P. And actually, I think <laughs> I think of the printer business as being more of like a ink cartridge replacement yes, business. That's the real yep. business. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Who gets scientific instruments? <laughs> right. That's a good question. It's <laughs> probably over with the PC business, I would think. Yeah. Hey, we're going to take a break. Come back with the back of the book. Tips, picks, and all of the above. But first, a word from our friends at Carbonite Online. Back up if you're not backing up. Well, you need to be. You're making memories. You're saving data. You're, you've got stuff on your computer you can't afford to lose. And if you're a business, well, I don't even need to tell you. <laughs> your business needs backup. Absolutely. You could be out of business. Carbonite is the way to back up automatic, continuous whenever you're online. And you can access all of your files anytime, anywhere with their free apps. Carbonite.com, you could try it free right now. You do not need to give them a credit card when you decide to buy, though. Please use the offer code Windows and uh, you'll get two bonus months free with purchase. Carbonite has uh, plans for all kinds of people. In fact, uh, they've, they've got a, a really great plan for, for businesses that includes a hardware appliance for local backup plus Carbonite's famous cloud backup. Now you've got real peace of mind. I wish they'd offer that free. Maybe they do. It would be great to have that at home, too. $59.99 a year for everything. That's the base model on your Mac or your PC. Uh, and you only pay once a year, and you can just forget it. It's just backing up, backing up. Carbonite.com. Try it free right now. Use the offer code Windows when you do, and you'll get two months free with purchase. You got to back it up to get it back. Do it right with Carbonite. Paul Thorop, Mary Joe Foley. Time for Paul's tip of Palooza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have right. I have kind of a number of picks and tips here this week. So um, I've been writing a bunch of Windows 10 tips, and so I would just say go to the website to get that kind of stuff. Um, but here's one, you know, I, I've never really written this up. I guess I could. But um, in case it's not immediately obvious, Microsoft is offering the Windows technical preview right now for free. Anyone can get it. Uh, you can clean install it. You can upgrade an existing Windows 7 or Windows 8 PC with it. And I believe it lasts until April uh, of next year. Although presumably future milestones will have later uh, expiration dates. And... You know, for whatever it's worth, there are little tricks you can use to extend expiration as well. But um, that's a free version of Windows you can use. I mean, it, 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 you know, Windows is actually fairly expensive to buy. Um, if you have a Mac and you want to set up a dual boot type of thing, if you have, sorry, <laughs> um, I guess my phone works again. Our phone's been out for two days, by the way. Well, good news. Um, they're calling to tell you it's <laughs> back online. <laughs> yeah. If you're using an older version of Windows... Um, on whatever PC and want something a little more modern. Uh, these things are all available now. You know what's and, funny? Yeah, your phone was out for two days. You didn't even notice. Well, there, we had to move the phones around. So they're actually plugged into the router that's in my office, which is uh, not where they would normally be. Uh, so I see. I'll have to deal with that. I didn't. It didn't occur to me that they might actually ring because they've been broken. <laughs> yeah, who calls? We have, Whoever call. we have an unlisted number that we only put in for the burglar alarm. No one should have yeah. the number. No one should ever call. And then somebody calls me yeah, every like, morning uh, at 9 a.m. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just the wrong number type thing. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't answer. But I think it's probably a solicitor of some kind. I don't Oh, lovely. Okay. So the second tip yes. is uh, various companies, you know, Netgear and now Microsoft sell these Miracast dongles. You plug them into your HDTV and you can go into the living room with your Windows laptop or tablet or an Android device and you can, sh you can uh, project to that screen. Um, and you can use that to do whatever you want to do. Browse the web, answer emails, watch a movie, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but you may already have a device in your living room that can act as a Miracast device. Um, Roku just added this capability to Roku 3 and the Roku uh, streaming stick, which are the two newest devices they make uh, via a software update. And so if you're already using a Roku device which is a multifunction device, right? It works with Netflix and Hulu Plus and all kinds of other services. 
now you can use it as a uh, Miracast device as well. And in fact, I would say I haven't my mine has not been updated with this uh, update yet. But I mean, why, why would you want multiple things plugged into your TV if you can just use one thing for everything? Why not just use this? So that's actually that's a pretty cool capability. And it's something you get for free if you already have a Roku. Very nice. Yeah, I know. You know, it's so funny. I kind of knew that because whenever. Um I launch, I don't know, some app, DLNA app or something. I see all my Roku's. Yeah. It's like I've been wondering about that. Yeah. I do too. The Roku's always show up on the they network. They show yeah. up on the net, like as Wi Fi devices or I don't know what, but anyway, they're there. Yeah. You can't do anything with them, but now it you can. It seems like you should be able to, but. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know what that is. <laughs> you know, when you're, yeah. when you're, when you do a lot of tech, you got a, you got a lot of stuff in your life. You, I don't know what that is, and I'm just going to ignore yeah, it. It's, it's a keylogger. Don't worry about yeah. it. Don't, okay, yeah. so nothing <laughs> important. Um, uh, two software picks as well. Um, Microsoft this re uh, Microsoft Research this week released an app called Zim for Windows Phone and Android. It's spelt with an X, so it's X I M. And basically, what they're doing is advertising. This is a new way to share photos. And so, you know, if you're out in a group with a group of people and you're taking Just photos, what I need. If you want to show people the photos, you have to show them your phone, and sometimes you give them the phone, and sometimes you drop the phone, and sometimes they have dirty hands, or sometimes you may have embarrassing photos in your phone that you don't want That's them to see. That's a and so. big problem. Yeah, I don't want to give them my phone. So now with this app, you can share, and it actually only the person who's sharing needs to have the app. And so you have a bunch of photos in your phone. You want to share them. You select them. Share with them. You share them over uh, an email message or a text message. So you need their phone numbers, which you would have. And then they... Click on the link that's sent, and they can all view the same oh, slideshow like literally simultaneously. And what I mean by that is you can page through the photos, and they'll see those transitions on their phones. So you can kind of dictate what's happening. You know, in other words, this is the photo of this. This is the photo of this. And as you swipe along, they're seeing those changes as well. Oh, Got to do this. Yeah, pretty cool. And I think I haven't looked at this yet. I haven't had to. It just, just, this just happened. But my understanding is that if... The other people have the app as well. They gain additional capabilities with regards to what can happen with the photos. And they're temporary. I mean, the, the after you share the photos, they, they, they're they not stored somewhere. They, they go away. Uh, it's basically just an impromptu way to say, oh, but hey, I took some photos from tonight, you know, as people often do. Um, and they can all, you know, you can all look at your own phone. Wow. Yeah, so kind after of one hour, they self-destruct. They, they, they self-destruct. So they're, it's obviously uploading somewhere, and then they browse to it. Yeah, to the NSA, Azure. obviously. And <laughs> Oh, Azure. No, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, Azure, a.k.a. Micro the NSA. National <laughs> Microsoft Azure. NSA. Yeah. Microsoft codename NSA. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so the other pick I have, this is from Raphael. Um, I, this one blows my mind because it has been... I mean, possibly not including a couple of web browsers here. And it's probably been years since I've had a Windows desktop application as a pick. Uh, but this is one, and it's an awesome one. And it, but what it is is a network traffic visualization tool. And it's called Glasswire. Sorry, it's free. So you run the app, and what it does is it monitors your network traffic. And so when, and you can watch this thing occur in in real time which is actually kind of amazing and so it gives you this beautiful display and you can mouse over things you can click on it to pause it and see what you can basically do is see what's doing what and it's it's sort of a way to make sure there's nothing screwy going on uh, with your computer for example when i look at today uh, the alerts i've gotten today and they, these pop up as little um, notifications near the bottom of the screen it will say uh, in my case uh, windows problem reporting uh, first network activity detected. And what that means is that some process is spun up and it has accessed the network. And this is something new because this thing wasn't running five seconds ago. So what's going on here? In this case, we know Windows problem reporting is something uh, built into Windows and something you want running. It's absolutely fine. Um, likewise, uh, when Microsoft Excel I ran earlier uh, actually hit a um, OneDrive-based document and that thing popped up a little... Um, notification, hey, here's this application that hasn't been running, and now it's as accessing the network. What's going on? Um, it's a beautiful, it's it's beautiful to look at, but it's also just incredibly useful. And you can go back over time and look to see, you know, what the status of your network access has been over a very wide range of time in a beautiful visual way. If you can see the uh, pictures of the app on the site, it's, it's, a, it's, it's actually beautiful to look at. Neat. Yeah. Lovely to look at, lovely to hold. It's right. 
I, it's everything you've ever wanted and more. <laughs> it's a beautiful app. It, it's got kind of a, um, I don't know what to describe this. The, the, the basic interface is almost like the Mozilla Firefox app. You know, it's got that kind of... Uh, and you know, who, is, nice. who is it for? I mean, is it... Uh, it's Well, it's for anyone who's like security-minded. In other words, you wouldn't use this in lieu of a firewall or in lieu of antivirus or whatever. But, you know, maybe you've been experiencing some kind of weird behavior where you're like, you know, do I have... Is there some bot on my system? Is some right. errant process? You know, whatever it is. And this just gives you a really nice way because if something was, you know calling home every second, it would be very obviously identified in this right, display. Right. And actually, I can tell looking at mine. I mean, I see things like, it is very normal, Skype, uh, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Windows Explorer. Actually, that one's kind of interesting. Um, well, probably through a OneDrive integration. Uh, Metro Twit, the Bonjour service from Apple is some for some reason. That's irritating. So I'm going to kill that. I'm going to kill that thing. That's annoying. <laughs> That's Apple. So, Good. Yeah, it's a that's a I it's love the, name. the type of it's yeah. just the type of tool I haven't yeah. been able to recommend in glass wire years. Yeah, Mary Jo has the enterprise pick of the week. I do. So the the other thing that Microsoft introduced on October first that we didn't really talk about yet is the next version of Windows Server Preview, Windows yeah. Server Next, um, or also Windows Server Ten. You could call it, I guess. Uh, we don't know what the final name of that product is going to be. It could be Windows Server 2015 or something catchy like that. Uh, but the preview bits uh, came out on October 1. They're on MSDN and TechNet, if you have a subscription to either of those. And um, I feel like we don't know all of the features that are going to be in the next server yet, but they did call out a few in a TechNet article that accompanied the, the new download. And some of the more interesting ones uh, that I noticed were they're making some changes to remote desktop services uh, so that they're going to add support for open GL and open CL apps. And then they took multi-point services, which are something that some schools use. You can ha hang a bunch of terminals off of a central computer and let everyone share that kind of that, like share the session. That's going to be built into um, Windows Server as a new role. So it's going to be multi-point services as a role in Windows Server. Pretty interesting. Uh, PowerShell 5.0 is in there. There's some new Hyper-V um, scale-out and failover clustering capabilities, some new storage quality of service capabilities, uh, all the kinds of things you would expect would be in an updated release of Windows Server. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing a very early preview of what's coming with Server, go grab those bits and go look on TechNet for the accompanying article listing out some of those changes. I, I would say... We're probably going to hear a lot more about Windows Server Next in a couple weeks at TechEd Barcelona. That would be a place where it would make a lot of sense for Microsoft to talk about that. And, oh, they did also um, put out a very early preview on System Center Next as well, at least parts of it. And, I, again, I think we're going to hear more about that at TechEd Barcelona uh, in two weeks as well. Cool. And your code name pick of the week? Codename Pick of the Week comes from Microsoft Research. It is Haven. And this is a really, really interesting project that they're doing. So if you followed the Microsoft Research Drawbridge draw project before, you know that Microsoft's been working on capabilities, a new, a new way to virtualize applications, basically. And that's what Drawbridge is. It's a library operating system. And it also has this thing called Pico processes. And together, those two elements are what Drawbridge is. So we haven't heard anything from that team in a while. This week, they published a paper that they presented at the USENIX Symposium on Operating Systems, all about this thing called Haven. So Haven builds on top of Drawbridge. And what it does is if, you're, uh, if Microsoft ever does productize this, I should say, it lets you shield applications from the cloud. So right now, if somebody's your cloud provider, they technically can see your data. Um, and this is what the whole Snowden thing is about, right? Uh, Microsoft's coming up with a way that if you run applications unmodified in this Haven, um, they call it an enclave, Haven enclave, you will actually not be able to see the data that is there and in those applications if you're the provider. So this has really, really big implications for the public cloud going forward. It'll make a lot of people very happy who right now are like, oh, I don't trust Microsoft. I don't trust cloud providers. They really can get at my data and provide my data to people I don't want having it. 
So if, if this someday does become a productized technology, which many technologies do these days from Microsoft Research, um, you'll be able to shield that. This paper is publicly available. If you go on the Microsoft Research site, you can check it out. Um, they have architectural diagrams in there. They have all kinds of good details about how this works um, and what they're thinking about with with uh, taking the, pr the prototype of this going forward. So definitely worth a check if you're somebody into operating systems. I'm going to be reading about it later today. All right. I can tell. Yep. And it is Oktoberfest time. Actually, Oktoberfest ended last couple of days ago, I think. But we yeah. can still celebrate at home. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I don't think I've done an Oktoberfest beer pick, which is kind of late and a little lame on my part. But um, there was a really good one I had recently from Firestone Walker in California called Oktoberfest. Oh. And what I, it, you know what, I, I don't typically like Oktoberfest beers that much because they're very malty. And you know me, I'm a hop what, person. What characterizes, they're malty, huh? They're more malty. They, they usually have a little bit of um, sometimes spice, a little hop spice um, that's that's uh, noticeable in them. But uh, like, this one like from malty. Firestone Walker, very, very much like a traditional um, Oktoberfest type beer. But I, I found it a little cleaner tasting and a little not I wouldn't say hoppy, but a little less traditionally malty. And they say they don't make it in um, an oak barrel or anything, even though the name is Oaktoberfest. It's just because of oak trees, I guess. Um, and they say Paso Robles, where it is, is Pass of the Oaks. So I'm sure it takes oh, a name from that, that as well. Yeah, it's a stainless steel one, not not an oak barrel one, but yeah. very, very clean, very good. If you're somebody who's kind of on the fence about Oktoberfest beers, I say you might like this one. I have never even had an Oktoberfest beer, so I'm... Really? A, I'm wow. A, I don't, well, I, yeah, I don't know what the... Do, have you guys been to Oktoberfest in Germany? In Germany? I mean, Ger no. The real no. one? No. Nope. Nope. Maybe we should do Windows Windows. We've done the beer Germany garden next thing. year. I'm listening. Yeah. I think this would... Uh, I think we uh, need to. Field trip. Road trip. Okay. <laughs> Boy, you guys are tough. Nothing bad has ever happened in a beer hall in Munich, Leo. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, Paul and uh, I, we're the history buffs. Uh, that concludes uh, this fabulous edition of Windows Weekly, you guys. Uh, Yeoman-like work. I said we all wore black to the show today to show some <laughs> solidarity. I don't know. It's good, though. I like the look. Uh, Paul Therat is at the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com. They both are here every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC for Windows Weekly, and we're very glad they are. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.